Welcome back. This is going to be part three of our homework review uh, for lesson 35, the volumes of prisms and cylinders. This is the question seven. And so we have no numbers. Just it says here, the shaded prism below is created from rectangular boxes shown. Points A, B, and C are midpoints of the respective edges. Explain using Cavallari's principle, why the volume of the shaded prism, well, the shaded prism being that triangular prism that's angled, uh, so the shaded prism would look, if I use maybe yellow, it'd be kind of like this figure here, and then all this here, here, and here. So yeah, that's hopefully, hopefully um, hopeful to figure out what shaded regions would be. Um, so why the volume of shaded prism would be one fourth the volume of the original rectangular box? Okay, so let us talk about dimensions in this case. So we're going to talk about, uh, let's give this dimension, we'll call this here our length, this here our width, and this here our height. Okay, so we know the volume of the box is length times width times height. Okay, and so one of the things we know is that we want to find the volume of the shaded figure, all right? And so the thing in this case is A is the midpoint of, of, uh, of, the, of the measurement of the length, that this must be half the length, L over, L over 2. And then this must be, in this case, from C to the edge will be L over 2 as well. Okay, and now... This part here, this measurement would be here, our, our width, and so is BC. BC is our width as well. All right? And believe it or not, this figure is a right triangle. It's a right triangle. It doesn't look at this way, but it is a right triangle because, again, it's a rectangular box. And so the, so those two measurements, the L over 2 and the width, will meet at a right angle. And so do, in this case, down here, B, C, and that L over 2. L over 2, this is 2. Okay. So, Cavallari's principle, Caval the Cavallari's principle, says the following. If in two solids of equal altitude, the sections made by planes parallel to and at the same distance from the respective bases are always equal, then the volumes of the two solids are equal. So, what does this mean? Well, okay. Let us take this figure we had from before. This is width, and this is L over 2. Okay, and then we'll bring this down, bring this down, bring this down here. Okay, and there's a right angle here and a right angle here. Okay, and we said this will be, so this is width, and this will be our height. The volume of this figure, so the volume is equal to, because the triangular figure is one half base times height, which is width times L over 2, and then times the perpendicular height, so H. So the volume, if it's standing straight upwards, would be length times width times height over 4. So that would be the volume of the figure if it was straight up, though. But we were told that in this, that this situation that we have L over 2 as this measurement here, and this is the width, a right angle, but this is now slanted, right? So slanted, no, but this is also the width, and this is L over 2, and a right angle, and that the, the perpendicular height is still H. Well, because they both have this, they're both congruent, this area here and this area here are both the same exact areas, okay? They're congruent each other, actually, because we do it almost from a side angle, side point of view. So those triangles are congruent, so are the ones in the bottom, in this case, the bottom triangle is also congruent, because L over 2 and H, uh, L over 2 and W, okay, L over 2 and W in a right angle. So same thing for this triangle. So this triangle here and this triangle here, they're congruent as well. They're all four triangles are congruent. And then the idea is that they're parallel to each other and the same distance between them. They both have a distance of H between the two triangular planes, if you will. 
they're both the same and therefore they will have the volume of of one fourth the volume of the hypotenuse therefore okay so we said in this case our volume of vo volume of our our I'll call p prism is going to be l over two times one half let me just uh, make a little space here because the base area is of a triangle so we'll have in this case one half l over two times the width that's the base area and the height is just the height we're going to get length times width times height over four this is going to be one fourth of the original volume here because the original volume was length times width times height so this triangular piece the shape region is going to be one fourth of it because of the way it's set up and all that the triangle piece really is one fourth of the area of the rectangle okay it's really one fourth of the area of the rectangle it has the same height therefore the volume should be only one fourth as well too so this is kind of, and, and this is, you're saying, well, how, how does it work out? Because Cavalier principle says, again, if the two planes are parallel and the two planes are come each other and they have this, they're basically the same, the same height. So it will have the same exact volume of a figure that is, let me use, uh, let me use purple. This same triangle, but instead going this way, going down. So it will have the same exact volume as this figure. And we know this one is one fourth of the entire well, entire prism. So the the yellow prism and the purple prism are both congruent and sorry, equal in volume, not congruent shaped up, uh, equal in volume. And so therefore, according to uh, Cavalier's principle, we can use that to show that if the purple prism is going to be one fourth of the volume of the rectangular box, then the yellow prism must also be the same. So this is how we find it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I sure hope this is helpful. Uh, Cavalier's principle can be maybe a little bit strange for us because, you know, we say it, was, it doesn't look that way. But, you know, the great thing about mathematics is that, you know, not drawn to scale all the time, but our principles still hold though. And so we can kind of do things without using numbers. We can use our, uh, and we substitute for generic values that will work every single time. And going back to our idea of proofs, I know no one likes hearing about proofs and all, but they really do help us with our theorems. So this is the end of part three. I uh, hope this is helpful. I know three-dimensional objects can be a little bit challenging. I do hope that you guys go back and review these things because they're very important for us, especially for our final coming up. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I appreciate all your suggestions as well, too. You know, leave a like if this was very helpful, if it was helpful at all to you guys. I appreciate it. Uh, leave a like for the video. It does help us out. And um, also, please follow us, OK? Like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed already. Look forward to us meeting after after geometry. We're going to be working on algebra two. I might go back to algebra one as well to go over some of the older topics. Summer is a long time, and uh, you know, we want to make sure you guys learn because learning the knowledge is more important than anything else. Thanks so much, ladies and gentlemen. Really uh, look forward to seeing you guys next video. Take care and be safe.